Hey everybody, what's going on? RJ here, and um, as many of you guys know, I used to work in Hollywood. I used to run a security company for like 18 years, something like that. I even wrote a book about it called Life After Rap. So hence a lot of stories I do talk about on my pages on YouTube and like and Facebook and Twitter. So a lot of you guys, you know, you guys are familiar with my stories and talking about stories. I got another story to share with you guys. This is how I met Michael Jordan. Now, for those of you who read my book, um, you probably read the story I'm about to talk about. Now, for those of you who haven't read my book yet, uh, chill, relax, and enjoy the story because it's going to be pretty interesting, especially for all you Michael Jordan fans out there. So for this new security company I'm working with, I'm still kind of new and, and, and with these guys, and so they sent me off to this new movie called Space Jam. Now, when I get there, I had no idea what I'm mean, watching, what I'm mean, doing. I mean, Space Jam, it's like a Bugs Bunny cartoon, so... So as I arrived, they sent me to this one trailer, and they said, this is where you posted at. You've been watching the talent who goes to that trailer. So I was like, okay, fine, no problem. And then a few minutes later, I see Michael Jordan. I said, like, whoa. Now, Michael Jordan didn't have any security guards, didn't have any bodyguards with them. It was just him and some other um, tall black guy that's with them. Now, I recognize the black guy next to him. is like T.K. Carter. Uh, he used to come a lot of uh, movies. He had a TV show, I believe, back in the 80s, early 90s. And T.K. Carter was Michael Jordan's uh, acting coach on the film. So when they come to to set, you know, I asked Michael Jordan, I said, hey, what's going on, little dude? And I'm a, he's kind of a tall dude. And I was like, hey, what's going on, Michael Jordan? And then I met T.K. Carter, he shook my hand. Hey, how's it going, man? Yeah, good, good, whatever. And they said, well, are you going to be the guy watching us? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be out here posted. If you guys need anything, just let me know. It's like maybe, I say, about an hour's pass, and they're inside doing their thing. And uh, I'm outside, and I see this father come by with the son. You know, uh, we're shooting in Pasadena, by the way, and, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really nice neighborhood. Um, a lot of white folks everywhere, and it's like, you know, really richy kind of like area. And so this, this father comes with the, with his son, and his son's carrying a basketball. He says, hey, I heard Michael Jordan's going to be on the show. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, Space Jam, yeah, yeah, I give him the whole info of what's going on. And so he said, you know, it's possible I'll give my son an autograph of, um, of Michael Jordan. I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. You know, it's no biggie because uh, he's... By this time, he's come out of his trailer. He's outside talking to some of the ADs, some uh, hairdressers, some costume people. And uh, so they see him, and he sees them. So I'm here, I'm watching, so it's like no biggie. So, you know, the son goes to Michael Jordan, and uh, I'm here talking to the dad about the neighborhood and, and so forth. Now, as I'm talking to the dad, we see a, I see a, like a basketball is like roll down, down, down the road. It's kind of like a slant here where we're at. And I see that the basketball is rolling down. And uh, I see the dad next to me, his face turned from like um, neutral to this really angry, like really pissed off face. So I go get the basketball because like, you know, hey, the basketball is rolling. It has to be the kids who I just sent to get um, the, the autograph from Michael Jordan. And I see the father. The father's really, really pissed off. I see the little boy crying. The boy had to be like maybe nine years old, I believe. And he's crying. And I see the 80s talking to the father and the little boy. I get the ball back to the boy. Um, it was unsigned, of course. Michael Jordan didn't sign it. And the father was, was, was pissed about how he was ranting about how Michael Jordan um, should sign his autographs to his fans. My son's only nine years old. He's a big fan of Michael Jordan. Why would Michael Jordan stop the ball with his hand and say, no autographs? I mean, this, this, I'm still kind of like, what a minute. I didn't see this happen, but um, I heard her kind of talking. And then when the father got pissed off and the ball didn't sign, so... I get them to calm down. I get the father and the son um, away from set. Now the AD comes to me, he's a new kid from Tennessee. You know, a lot of these PAs are pretty new and, and green. And uh, he's like, you know, RJ, uh, future reference, we don't have no one come sign autographs to Michael Jordan. Um, no white kids, only black kids. Okay, that's, that's one of the policies on the show. When working with Michael Jordan, you don't have any white kids. And just then I, hear, I see the door open up and T.K. Carter comes out and Michael Jordan pops out. He's like, I'm gonna get this nigga straight. Nigga, no autographs, no fucking autographs. Too early in the morning for that kind of shit. Like, wait a minute, did Michael Jordan just call me a nigger? Did he just call me a dumb shit? Um, for what? For games, ask, having the kid go get an autograph from this guy? I mean, now when like Michael Jordan's like yelling at me, I, I, I glance over to TK Carter, his acting coach, and he gets that look in his face like, you know, like, Michael Jordan's with Michael Jordan, you know, kind of like ignore the bullshit. But, it's kind of like, wait a minute, you know, you know, it's like somebody you like idolize on TV because the greatest basketball player ever, and here you are be called the N word and a dumb shit. 
I mean, it's too early in the morning for that shit on the film crew. Especially, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still kind of new in the security company. And we're working on bigger productions from the, the other movies I've worked on. So, and to be called, you know, this by Michael Jordan himself. It's kind of a buzzkill. Especially if you're a sports fan. Now, I'm thinking, like, wait a minute. How can you be picky on who gets your autograph and who doesn't get your autograph? I mean, aren't... I, you're a superstar. Isn't it like... Worldwide fame. I mean, Michael Jordan's worldwide fame. I mean, what? Oh, I'm sorry, but uh, only you can get my autograph. You can't get my autograph. You can't get my autograph. That makes no sense. I mean, I, it totally made no sense. And then him yelling at me, calling me the N word and a dumb shit because I had somebody walk up to him and get his autograph when he was doing absolutely nothing. And I saw him give other kids what autographs that um, actually they weren't white. Now this this whole autograph situation. Um, wasn't like one of the first things to go on. I mean, it was kind of a, a start. I mean, my first impression was Michael Jordan was like, oh, cool, Michael Jordan, you know, that's, the guy's a legend. And then to see him and him yell at me and calling me names because I had some white kid get an autograph for him. Now, that's just the beginning. Now, uh, when I found out this house that we were filming at for Space Jam belonged to Michael Jordan's, belonged to Michael Jordan. But he actually didn't really stay there. His California girlfriend stood there. So one of our jobs, uh, I personally did it quite a few times, was every time the wife came to set, we took the girlfriend out and shopping at Sherman Oaks Gallery, you know, uh, Melrose. So, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy. It was like, wait a minute. And then when his wife would leave, I'd get the page, and then I'd bring the girlfriend back, and then, you know, like nothing ever happened. Now, a lot of people are probably saying, you know, Michael Jordan, I, I can't be him. You're, you're you're making up stories. I'm not making up stories. Everything I tell, I write, I, I post on my YouTube page and my my books and everything else are all true stories. Now, this, like I said, these are just a few fractures that happened at this Pasadena location. If you want to read more horror stories from Michael Jordan and what other stuff antics he did while I worked with him on the movie Space Jam, check out my book Life After Rap on Facebook, Twitter. Kendo, Amazon, Barnes Nobles, iTunes, you can read the book, you can read the whole stories, what I wrote about Michael Jordan. These basketball stars weren't professional as they show on TV, their little presence. And then uh, Shaq's wife wouldn't make the TV show Basketball Wives and uh, give her the whole truth. And the whole uh, Chloe and uh, La uh, Lamar Odom situation wouldn't be happening. Now, don't get me started on the Shaq stars, okay, because uh, I worked with Shaq quite a few times and... You don't want to hear my Shaq stories. Once again, everybody, I want to thank everybody out there who's been watching my show. Thank you for the support and uh, everybody who passed me 150 subscribers on YouTube. You guys are awesome. That's totally rock. I will be coming out with more stories about celebrities. If you want to hear more stories, let me know. If not, check out my book. Check out my links. I have a lot of stuff. And like I said, everything I talk about here is all true. And just my unscripted life here working in Hollywood for the past 18 years doing security. So a lot of crazy things. You never really knew what goes on in the film set when everyone's, when when the film crew is gone. We got tons of stories, trust me. Till then everybody, RG out.